Start the day with a song and sing the whole day through. Even while you're busy working, do just like the birdies do. Though the day may be long, you never will go wrong. Or keep on, keep any old key, just start the day with a song. Before the white man came to this great continent, it was inhabited by a stalwart race of people known as Indians. Though they were all brothers under the redskin, the Indians were divided into different tribes, such as the Blackfeet, the Flatheads, the Hotfoots, and, of course, the Cleveland Indians. The Indian tribes were all led by famous chiefs, among whom were Big Chief Crazy Horse and Big Chief Rain in the Face. The Redskins were crafty hunters and could lure a moose out of the woods by imitating its call. Yeah. Yeah. Indians were the first to grow tobacco. also the first to commercialize it. Communication from one tribe to another was carried on by means of smoke signals. <laughs> Before Indian braves went on the warpath, they made themselves look ferocious by decorating their bodies with war paint. It was a dangerous undertaking for any pale face to travel through Indian territory. I'm Bob Trout. I've got a story here that I think is big, really big, because it's bound to have a terrific impact on business. I'm talking about a new market, a big new market, millions upon millions of new prospects with $15 billion to spend. That's right, I said $15 billion. That's a lot of money, isn't it? The surprising thing is that it's a fresh market, still full of opportunities. It grew up so fast got so big in a hurry that few of us realize its scope. Now these days, nobody's likely to pass up chances to sell. And yet right here in our own front yard, there's a neglected market. There's money waiting to be spent. 
To get the story of this market, to be able to tell you the secret of selling the Negro, we did a lot of digging. We talked to leading businessmen, to customers, and to salesmen. We went to Washington, D.C. We set up cameras and other key points around the nation. And out of this all, there emerged a story, the story of a new market. <laughs> Yes, this is the market we're talking about, the new Negro family. Their name is Wells or Wilson, Smith or Brown or Alexander or Breen. They live in Chicago, in Atlanta or New York, in Detroit, St. Louis, Los Angeles, any one of a thousand cities and towns. All over the country, families such as this are enjoying new prosperity. They have new interests, new standards of living, a buying power they've never enjoyed before. They're good prospects for practically all types of goods and services. How do I get the order? Well, to tell you the truth, I don't do anything. Uh, anything different, that is. I've been calling on these accounts long enough to know that the Negro just wants to be treated like everybody else. No matter who you're calling on, a little friendliness and courtesy help a lot. But naturally, anybody resents being patronized or talked down to. So I usually call a man Mr. Brown, Mr. Smith, or Mr. whatever his name is, until he tells me to call him by his first name. And of course, I always stick to business. I stay away from talk about race or religion or politics. That goes for talk about Negro celebrities, too. You know, this business about what good prize fighters and singers the Negroes are. Who cares? When a guy's in business, no matter what color his skin is, He's interested in making a living, in making money. That's uppermost in his mind. I guess maybe what I'm saying is that I try to help any way I can, sometimes with displays or ad materials, or an idea once in a while. The important thing is that if it helps push sales for the dealer, it helps push them for me, too. Hmm. Handle the Negro account just like any of your others. Don't patronize. Stick to business. Get interested in the account. Pitch in and help any way you can. Sounds like pretty good sales advice. That's the secret of selling the Negro. Well, how about it? What do you think of this new market? It can open new outlets for you and for everybody who sells goods or services. It's still possible to get in on the ground floor when this market is just beginning to grow and to expand. The facts and the figures that we see here are just a small sample of what they promise to be next year and the years after that. Yes, here are men and women with money to spend, and they spend it for exactly the same things as you and I and everyone else. They buy almost every type of product and service that you have to offer, and they can be reached like everyone else through publications that appeal to their interests and desires that deliver the kind of loyal readership that can be proved both in surveys and in down-to-earth sales. Here is a ready-made market waiting to be asked to buy. Here are millions of customers for what you have to sell. Customers with $15 billion to spend.
was tough. You've been riding hard for Africa. You bought the Pakistani kente cloth from Joanne Fabrics. You bought the art from TJ Maxx. You bought the black soap from the dollar store. And it wouldn't matter if you had an authentic Mbutu chiseled relic from a mountaintop in the Congo. You're not African. Talking about you taking trips to the motherland. You taking trips to the other land talking about you feel at home. Nigga, they laughing at you, B. You not African. FakeAncestry.com face ass nigga. West Africa, right? Right? West Africa, right? Right. Go ask your great, 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 your great granddaddy, your great granddaddy, your great, great granddaddy. Ask him who was here before a white man or Asian ever stepped foot on his land beneath your feet. Ask him about Africa and see if you don't slap your ass out the afterlife. So basically, what you're saying is all your family who was actually murdered and slaughtered here on your motherland, they died in the vanity of your perpetual ignorance. What, you don't think I was where you are now? What do you think I thought the first time a nigga hit me with a you not from Africa shit? I didn't think anything about it. This nigga don't know what he's talking about. Fuck this nigga. He's a coon. The fuck you mean we, I'm not from Africa? I was on that Africa shit too. Remember? Remember me going in on Floyd Mayweather because he said, what did Africa ever do for us? And I'm like, yo, your people is from Africa, nigga. What the fuck is you talking about? Remember that? I know some of you who rocked with me a long time ago remember that shit. You know, I think it's... Follow me here. I think it's interesting that over the past few years, we even be hearing these celebrities say it. But they say it like coded. And we be, we've cooned them for it. Like, think about it. Like, Raven Simone said that shit. Think about how they play us now. And then we bash Raven Simone. Now, yeah, we should bash Raven Simone because she's a coon. But she said something. Now, it's fucked up because she said, I'm an American. It's still out of context. I don't know how to stress this to you if you can't and aren't willing to do the research yourself. I challenge you to find out who you really are. Lost children. We all know we're lost. We feel like we're looking for home. Home is under your feet. You've been duped out of your motherland that you still walk, live, and die on. And I'm saying that from the standpoint that that Africa shit was all part of the grand deception. Don't you understand? There's this thing that we've been programmed to do through society now where dark skin or black means African. It doesn't. Guess what? There's other dark skin people too. And they're not African. There's other black people with the, ne the Negroid features, all that shit. If you go to Africa, they know this. The absurdity of an American Negro thinking he's an African. Go talk to Africans about whether or not they really think that.
maybe that's a little bit of the reason they don't fuck with us. Because they like you claiming you African, nigga, you're not African. You from here. You dumb, nigga. All over the world, Americans are so dumb. There's a whole history here that's been hidden. And it's your history. Can't put 100 million slaves on a boat from another continent. Can't do it. The numbers don't add up. The numbers don't work. The numbers do not work. You understand what I'm saying? Here, people, today, the numbers do not work. 300 slave ships running balls to the wall cannot deliver 10 million slaves in the span of a century, in the span of a millennia on a wooden fucking boat. Those bullshit wooden boats can't make it across the treacherous seas at a fast pace. That voyage took months. They didn't lie about the conditions on the boat because not many people survived. And when the majority of those slaves went to South America, and when I say majority, all, Ninety-five percent. Five percent came to North America.
these supposed Indians have been painted as a native. But let's go even further. The history of all of these ancient places that you want to put us over here, it's over here. You don't understand that? Our shit over here more John Blaze than that. All the old relics is here. All the old relics is here. All the old land. All the old trees. You feel me? What happened is they came over here, they saw your shit was fucking lit. The idea of Europe bringing civilization to the Americas simply flips truth on its head. This is what European explorers actually found in North America. Far and away the most beautiful city on Earth. Five times the size of London or Rome. Great towers and buildings rising from the water. 60,000 gleaming houses and how spacious and how well built they were. Of beautiful stonework and cedar wood and the wood of other sweet scented trees. The many streets and boulevards of the city were so neat and well swept, despite the multitude of inhabitants. Crisscrossed with a complex network of canals, like an enormous Venice, but also remarkable floating gardens that reminded of nowhere else on Earth. While Europe was drinking water from its polluted city rivers, huge aqueducts transported America's water from fresh springs. But what impressed most were the special merchant areas, where timber and tiles and other building materials were bought and sold as well as greengrocer streets, where one could buy every sort of vegetable, fruits, honeys, nut paste and chocolates. Astonished by the personal cleanliness and hygiene of the colorfully dressed populace, and by their extravagant use of soaps, deodorants and breath sweeteners. Most Europeans never bathed and kept clothes on at all times. The Pilgrim's Notes biographer Zini Finer had a terrible smell. Indians tried, quote, without success to teach them to bathe. The settlers also had bad breath from rotting teeth. Death and starvation was so common that corpses were just dumped in open pits known as poor holes. Many turned to alcohol and committed suicide. In fact, the story of the first settlers has been deliberately changed, notes author James Lowen, because the truth is so shameful. They actually settled hundreds of miles further south and stayed in America because the mission was a failure. Their real aim, reports historian Robert Beverly, was to find some gold and take it back to Europe. They spent their days digging random holes in the ground, haplessly looking for gold instead of planting crops. Soon they were starving and digging up putrid Indian corpses to eat. They took some Indian prisoners and forced them to teach the colonists how to farm. Through generations, niggas got duped. I'm not here to hate on you. I was here, I was in the very same place not too long ago. But you know what? When faced with truth, I will always accept the truth over a lie. Your ancestors blacker than black and blacker than black and all that shit. They just not from Africa. And the people who know they have African roots know they have African roots because they know more than third generation removed. And most likely it's West Africa where the slaves here were shipped to West Africa. So just in case you niggas caught on years down the road, we're going to put all these niggas on the coast of West Africa. That'll get them. You don't think that you don't think he did that. You don't think he did that. I mean, it's well documented slaves from the Americas went to Africa. Why would how what? I thought slaves came from Africa. Slaves from the Americas went to Europe. They're not gonna go all the way across the world to the Indies and risk all their lives and half their cargo when well, they could go right there to Europe, correct?
Message! To argue who discovered America first is to ignore the fact it has been populated for hundreds of thousands of years. To argue who discovered America first is to ignore the fact it has been populated for hundreds of thousands of years. To argue who discovered America first is to ignore the fact it has been populated for hundreds of thousands of years. American man. American man. The American man from South Carolina. Perry let a relative send in his DNA for analysis. But when the testing company tried to track his Y chromosome, they simply couldn't. Further research revealed that Perry's Y chromosome came from a lineage that broke off from other species about 338,000 years ago. That's long before the first Homo sapiens, or modern humans, evolved some 195,000 years ago, making our Y chromosome lineage much longer than geneticists believed. What? More important, we should examine what effects visitors from other lands have had on early Indian civilizations. About 1,500 years ago, a sudden cultural surge occurred in Central America, which has mystified the world of archaeology for many years. Some believe this may have been brought about by contact from China. The Buddhist religion was flourishing in China in the 6th century. monastery in Shenxi province, these statues stand guard over the records of Buddhist history. We learn from these stone tablets that in 570 AD, several monks set sail across the Great Sea to seek new converts to the Buddhist faith. The official account of their voyage states that the monk Hu Shen and his companions sailing eastward came upon the shores of a strange faraway land. The distance logged was 20,000 leagues, or about 7,000 nautical miles. This would place them on the coast of Southern California. The account does not record their feelings as they cautiously entered a strange new land. Only that they made their way inland through forests, across mountains and deserts, for 350 miles. Last, they stood on the rim of a great canyon, banded with many colors. Could they have been describing the Grand Canyon? The account continues that at the bottom of the canyon, far below, there was a river winding among boulders. Making their way south, they crossed a great desert where the inhabitants ate the purple fruit of a strange tree they called the Fu Song tree. Was this a cactus? Finally, they came through dense jungles, arriving, some believe, in Central America, just prior to the great cultural flowering of the Mayan civilization. In China, we were permitted into the forbidden city the former imperial palace is now a museum, housing special relics of the past. We were allowed to film the ancient jade soldier. The soldier's body, in burial, had been completely encased. It is significant that jade burial masks of the same period have been found in Mayan excavations. In China, we also filmed many serpent heads, only to find identical figures in Central America.